Hello viewers, this is Dr. K. Rajshekar. Uh, in this video, we are going to focus on National Quantum Mission. Because we have heard recently in April 2023, Government of India you know, approving this mission. So let's talk about what is National Quantum Mission, okay, and what are the objectives and the focus areas and what India is going to get benefited from this, okay. So first of all, what is quantum? Quantum refers to anything that is being studied, like if you are studying about nature at a very fundamental level, at the scale of atoms, subatomic particles, that is what is quantum and we deal it in quantum mechanics, right? A fundamental concept of physics where we are studying things at the fundamental level, okay? So, we are dedicating our resources, our developmental activities related to this in the form of a national quantum mission. What is the goal of this National Quantum Mission? This is to aid developments in R&D, you know, both scientifically and industrially in the country. That is what the goal. So, to guide, to prepare a framework and support it with proper funding so that these developments would take place at a rate that is going to benefit India, you know, at best. So, what is this quantum mission? Let's get into details about this quantum mission and what are we trying to achieve as part of this quantum mission. Okay, so as part of this mission, India wants to develop few things under the guidance of Department of Science and Technology. The nodal agency here is Department of Science and Technology and the time period for this is 2023 to 2031, 2023 to 2031. So, as part of this, we want to develop quantum computers, quantum computers. What are quantum computers? Briefly, quantum computers refer to computers that work on the concept of quantum mechanics. To explain you very simply here, uh, these computers do not use like classical computers where zeros and ones are used, classical bits we refer to them. These are not used here. Instead, we use what is called quantum bits. We use what is called quantum bits quantum bits. In short, these are called qubits, q-u-b-i-t-s, qubits are quantum bits. So, they do not use regular classical bits like zeros and ones, rather they use quantum bits to run a computer. What is the benefit of that? The benefit is they can make, you know, so much of computation work possible, so much of computation work possible, okay, overcoming the limitations of classical computers. Such computers we want to design carrying 5200 qubits, 5200 qubits. So initially in five year period, we want to create quantum computers that work on 5200 qubits. Google in 2019 has made a quantum computer that works with 50 qubits, 50 such units, okay. Right, but that's not enough. We want to go even further. In eight year period, we want to create something that goes beyond this up to 1000 qubits. You may be wondering what is a qubit here, as I was telling you, we use quantum components, like it could be electrons, it could be photons that are used to run a computer, okay, remember so much. Okay, right, such quantum computers we want to create with the different abilities in five year period and in eight year period, that is a major objective here. And then by launching this mission, because you know very few countries, actually there are six countries which have done, like uh, America, Austria, Finland, so many European countries, France and also Canada and China. These countries have launched dedicated programs on this. So India is one of the very few countries which are investing, indeed a significant amount of money into this field. Okay, next objectives. What are the objectives, specific objectives? Because for related to any mission, it is important to be aware about what objectives have been specified in the mission. So, first of all, to develop indigenous quantum technologies. So, we do not have to rely forever, you know, if you invest money early into this field on indigenous technology. So, the goal is that create technology infrastructure within the country. And then faster collaboration between different stakeholders. Who are the stakeholders here? Mostly knowledge flows from academy. Application oriented work mostly happens in industry and also research institutions. So academia, research institutions collaborating with industry. 
So this is basically filling the gap between different stakeholders in the field. So they all come together and develop a robust technology required for the country. Next, build a strong ecosystem for quantum technology R&D. Create infrastructure, create such a network, such an environment that is greatly supports the development of these technologies. So proper and supportive ecosystem is required. Next, create a skilled workforce. In order to make things happen, even short term, long term, we need trained people. So one of the objectives of this mission is to create that skilled workforce. Okay. Then accelerate the commercialization and adoption. Any technology will benefit any country provided it results in useful products and services which are addressing the you know, national issues. That is what we can do. That is what the goal here is once you develop these components, create right ecosystem, accelerate the commercialization of it okay? and adoption of these technologies and services in various fields. These are the major objectives of the quantum mission. What are the focus areas? So where exactly are we focusing? This mission talks about four focus areas or four thematic areas. Standard. And we have more that are added to it as well. What are they? One is quantum computing. As we have seen in the objectives, first and foremost goal is to use this technology to create quantum computers which can provide us various applications. Computers that depend on quantum mechanics. Communication. Also another focus area is to find solutions to secured communication. Okay, Secured communication. Communication that cannot be easily retrieved or, or studied or read by the intermediate agencies or anybody who probably want to steal that data. So more secured form of communication through quantum. Quantum sensing that is detecting you know various sensors either it could be simple pollution sensors to more complicated sensors like that are used in the healthcare sector. Such components can be built using this. Another focus area is quantum metrology. Quantum metrology. Metrology deals with you know measuring things. Okay if I have to tell you Quantum technologies can improve the way we can quantify things, we can measure things. Okay? To give you an example, we can build better atomic clocks, clocks that are good or highly precise in measuring time, which are often used in satellites like in navigation systems. Such things can be built using quantum metrology. And then quantum materials and devices, like that many different quantum materials you want to identify and devices you create which have range of applications. These are the focus areas. Then why is India investing significantly in quantum technologies? I think they all come together as you see here. So we want to, we have certain objectives. We want to focus on few areas and then we are investing so much money because it is relatively new field. We don't have quantum computers, working computer, quantum computers in our hands. So it's absolutely important for us to, you know, uh, invest enough money because complex technology and also Nothing ha much has happened in this field. So yes, and by investing so much of money, if you can create quantum computers, we can achieve you know, different applications in different fields, thereby ensuring the security, enhance the security for the country is possible through that. Defensive and offensive capabilities. We take different approaches in security measures. Sometimes you know, we are responding to the problems. You know, other times we are proactive and figuring out even before problems happen. Such technologies can get better with quantum. And then also to ensure national sovereignty because you know as a sovereign nation India doesn't want anybody to interfere in our fights and such things can become possible with better technology. I think quantum can provide through uh, you know more secured communication it makes it possible. So offensive and defensive capabilities and sovereignty could be seen as part of this and technological leadership you know if you hear in the terms of what Vikram Sarabhai has said that a country like India Okay, should be second to none in technological development. That is a goal, that is a vision of you know people who have guided technology in India. So when you have access to that technology, will become you know leaders like America, China. Why are they you know able to dominate so much because of the technological developments? India want to acquire that position as well. And economic growth, economic growth, and all these, you know, like skill development, infrastructural development. All results in economic growth, new applications, greater commercialization would ensure economic growth, which is a requirement for a developing nation like India. That is what justifies why India is investing so much. 
But of course, no technology comes without any problems. So we also have certain challenges to face. So R&D, we have to build a good R&D system in the country because it's relatively a new field. Not much has happened yet. And skilled workforce, not many people have been trained. That could be a hurdle here. Infrastructure and resources have to be created. International competition, people are competing with each other. They want to become the you know first country or the first few countries to dominate in this field. We have to, you know, we probably expect little help from, from those uh, countries. So we have to win this game. Standardization and interoperability. In new fields, usually we don't have standard protocols, standard methods, so creates a lot of confusion and it is it becomes difficult to work you know, between different groups. So interoperability becomes difficult. And uh, absence of standardization would be a challenge. We have to overcome that. Funding and resource allocation. That Indian government has issued 6,000 crores has been given by Indian government towards this mission, which is considered to be you know significant amount of money. So that is going to be taken care of. Ethical and societal implications. And uh, the way world is moving, like we are noticing that with artificial intelligence, it is resulting in a lot of ethical issues. So we have to address them before they cause significant damage to the society. This is also another requirement before, you know, going forward in this. Yes, more or less, you know, we have identified the challenges. We know what we need to do. Better funding, better research collaboration. We need skill development that we have already talked about. We need better infrastructure for people to put their efforts to create something like this. And at the same time, we need to understand about the issues that would pop up. So regulatory framework for that and uh, including industry along with research institutions and as well as academia which we talked about is one of the objectives of this and international collaborations okay academic collaborations where people can help us to go forward build it together okay these are the things that we can follow in order to make this a reality okay thank you i felt probably you have understood about the idea the core idea about quantum mission in a crisp manner and in exam relevance what is the exam relevance if you have seen in upsc exam in prelims they have asked about you know, quantum bits. Quantum bits are related to what? This is about, you know, creating computers, more advanced computers, quantum computers. They can ask us about questions on objectives, you know, which of the following are the key objectives of the so-and-so mission. Or they can give statements on the, how much money is India spending? How many countries, you know, not necessarily the facts, but they can ask few countries or many countries have already invested into that. Or they can ask questions on what is the immediate benefit or the ultimate benefit sometimes of by investing money into these kind of technologies. Such questions are very much possible. Okay, I believe, you know, focusing on them would greatly help you towards your preparation. Thank you.